Okay, so let me do a, a retake. Um, and remembering what questions I've done before, I've done these questions before and I just did the loop the loop one. Hopefully I'll get a different one so that I can, um, you know, I don't have to do other stuff with it. Oh, good. Wow, I'm so lucky. Uh, not a question I've done before. So let me just uh, um, do that. It says uh, elastic collision. They tend to be mathematically mess. <laughs> it's a mess, but just read and not lose heart. Two balls of some mass set up as two pendulums, okay. The balls are hanging from strings of equal length, so that when they vertically and they barely touch each other, right? So there's gonna be some one-dimensional collision there. A can be lifted up to the left, swing to the right, reach some height, okay. Left turn swing down. Uh, I think I might want to just copy this so that I can annotate it and kind of uh, indicate my snapshots. So what are they asking here? They are asking uh, A, if the two masses are the same, okay, that makes me happy because that will make my life a little bit easier. <laughs> what are the velocities of the balls a split second before the collision and after the collision? Oh, there are going to be uh, multiple, uh, a total of three snapshots. The very first snapshot is um, here. Um, let me label this initial. And really the reason for needing this initial snapshot and the um, before snapshot is in this swing down, uh, some of the quantity, uh, some of the conserved uh, quantities that we'll be using are not conserved throughout the entire processes. In this swing down, so energy is conserved because it's uh, you know just the pendulum, but the momentum is not conserved. And in this elastic collision, we are going to use conservation of momentum, but um, in this swing down process, we can't use the same conservation law. So we have to first we work we need to first work out what, are, what is the momentum of the ball MA right before the collision and then work through the collision process. And then uh, one final snapshot they will need to use because they are asking for the velocities of the balls up split second before, I can get that from here, and they want it after the collision. So I'll need a third snapshot to work out, okay, they've collided, so after the collision, um, the MB is moving at some speed of VB, MA is moving at some speed of VA. So you will need to describe this uh, uh, after snapshot. There, it's a more of a separation in time, not quite separation in space. <laughs> so it's a little bit messy. So I have a col um, snapshot before collision, snapshot after collision. And for this process, I'll be using conservation of momentum. And because they told us it's elastic collision, conservation of energy. So with that, uh, let's just work it out. So I think uh, for the snapshot of before, I can just uh, use this swing down. So I'm using, um, let me just label this part one. So this uh, for this uh, uh, initial to before, these are all just proper names, just labels, <laughs> nothing more. Um, so uh, total energy is conserved. So we can say that um, the total energy before, that would be the, oh, let me just make explicit some of the assumptions. This is where my y is equal to zero. So my initial gravitational potential energy will be ma times g times h plus the kinetic energy, which will be zero, released from rest, or I'm assuming that, if not, 
and uh, it's yeah released from rest good and if they didn't say it i would assume it. <laughs> that is equal to the total energy in the before snapshot uh, where the potential energy is zero but it now has some um, oh so i need to describe its speed i haven't assigned a letter to that let me call this uh free not um, so it's going to have kinetic energy associated with that one half ma times v naught squared okay uh, i think i can do this algebra um my masses cancel out because they are in every term so solving for v naught it's gonna be two times that square root square root of two times gh okay so that's uh, one of the velocities oh it's all for velocities so let me just start typing uh, uh a split second before the collision or oh, a is moving to right at speed v not is equal to square root of two times g times h well b is at rest uh, okay we need it immediately after the collision so for that the snapshots are the before snapshot we're picking up from where we left and it's going to go to after snapshot after the collision and as we were saying before in this process total energy is conserved because it's elastic collision the question told us to and momentum is conserved because it's a collision there's a negligible uh, net external force imparting momentum so there's going to be two equations that we write down. One will be conservation of total energy. And actually, whenever something like describes a collision as elastic, it's actually more strict than that. It's talking about kinetic energy being conserved. So we can say our total initial kinetic energy, the kinetic energy of the ball A plus the kinetic energy of ball B, it wasn't moving, that sum is conserved, one half m a a squared plus one half and b three b squared okay that's my our equation one we need a second equation uh, because you can kind of see that you need two equations because you have two unknowns one equation is not going to cut it so the second equation is the conservation of momentum we say the momentum of a ball a plus the momentum of ball b is equal to the oh wait uh, yeah that's the right expression equals the momentum of final momentum of ball a and a times v a plus the final momentum of ball b and let me depart from my usual convention and express this as a vector quantities meaning i'm not going to put the signs into my equation i'm just going to let these quantities be positive or negative that indicates a direction um, and you can see that in the above equation, the signs didn't matter because I was squaring. Here, it will matter, and I'll um, just be mindful of the signs. So, so in this expression, uh, one thing that will greatly simplify what we are doing is uh, we can say that because mass A is equal to mass B, uh, we can actually cancel out all the mass terms. It occurs in every single term. We can say um, I divide it through by n a, and that cancels out n b as well because they are the same. So with that, I get this a simplified equation. Uh, let me just uh, write this out. So one prime is uh, oh, let me multiply through by two as well. So that will give me v naught squared is equal to v a squared plus v b squared and 2 prime is equal to v naught is equal to v a uh, plus v b and uh, I, I you know i didn't like when the question said elastic and the reason for that is really right here um where it says um it's being squared uh, whenever you have elastic collision kinetic energy is being conserved so you are going to be using this equation and it's uh, algebraically just uh, challenging um so i never liked that but let me just uh, work through it i got 10 minutes i think that's enough time so um so you will see the same model answer 
the approach that I prefer is um, where I, I use linear combination. So I take this and then I can just square the whole thing um, to get V not squared for the left hand side. For the right hand side, it's you know this parenthesis is squared, so you have to expand it all out. Expanding it out, you get VA squared plus VB squared plus the cross terms, VA times VB, VB times VA. That's two VA times VB. So as you stare at this equation and stare at this equation, I hope you notice know something, which is that um, when you take a difference between them, a lot of the terms will cancel out. So let me call this 2 double prime. So if you do something like 2 double prime as an equation, minus 1 prime, then what you end up with is left-hand side completely cancels out. 0 is equal to right-hand side. Doesn't completely cancel out, but VA squared cancels out, VB squared cancels out. We have 2 times VA times VB. And take a second to kind of look at this uh, expression here. What this is saying is one of these two things, or maybe both, have to be true. VA has to be equal to 0, and or VB has to be 0. And it's really one or the other, because if they are both 0, then this doesn't work. <laughs> so. If you say if VB is equal to zero, I think that's the situation where the collision didn't actually happen. In, as this swings down, if it misses a ball B, then yeah, that's a, that'll give you the solution with this being equal to zero. Okay, we don't want that. We don't want them to actually collide. So we'll say that VA is equal to zero. So if we say VA is equal to zero, then uh, working through back, okay, this is zero. So VB is equal to VB naught. VB is equal to VB naught. Then we calculated above, which was a square root of 2GH. And V naught is square root of 2 times G times H. Yeah. So the, oh, I'm still in part. <laughs> yeah. So the split second after the collision, after the collision, Ball A is uh, at rest. That's what this is. And ball B is moving at speed of we not um, the same as that calculated above. Good. Um, so that's A. Now for B, okay, it's <laughs> now introducing assumptions that. Um, that I don't like, but I, I think I can actually save a little bit of time by reusing my previous work. So I set up this equation here, right? So nothing in my um, the part one calculation will change because um, the it didn't depend on the mass of MA anyway. So I can just uh, reuse this, and instead of um, making the same assumption that I made earlier. I will simply say, okay, let's just uh, undo some of those assumptions uh, where kinetic energy is conserved. And instead of being able to say that they are the same, um, now I, the question is going to be giving me some information about mass A in terms of some factor times MB. All right. Um, let me do it this way. <laughs> I have a computer algebra system. I can let the computer algebra system do all the work. Let me just do that. Use of computer algebra system is totally allowed. So, you know, use it. Uh, go not. Uh, and uh, we not. We A. We B. Okay, I think that's all the symbols. And let me just define all my equations. I have equation one. That's a 0 0.5 times MA times V naught squared is equal to 0 0.5 times MA times VA squared plus 0. MB times VB squared. Uh, equation 2, uh, MA times VA is equal to MA times VA plus MB times VB. Okay, and equation 3, uh, MA is equal to N times MB. Okay, 
let me make sure I put in all these equations correctly. Okay, I think that looks right. And I'm just going to use the solve function. Solve the system of equations for the three unknowns. Oh, what are the, th oh, I'm solving it for uh, V, uh, 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 VA, VB, and one of the unknowns is MA. It's just the quirk of how I enter the equation. I know it's already solved for there, but. Okay, so let's hope it can just solve it. All right, great. Uh, it's given me two set of equations. And you can kind of see that one of them is uh, similar to what I was talking about earlier. It's the case where the balls just miss each other, no collision happens. So this is my answer here, which is the weight. They are the same. Uh, that's not helpful. Um, Something's wrong, all right. Let me try this. Uh, instead of MA, let's just put in uh, what the expression for MA is. Maybe that will help um, resolve some of these issues. And sometimes, you know, um, computer algebra system needs a little bit of coaxing. Um, so, what we have is this. Okay, I put in everything I need, and I'm not solving for MA anymore. Um, something's gone wrong. I wonder, so I'm still coaxing my equations. So MB actually cancels out from the system. So that kind of creates a dependent system of equation. That might be what it's tripping over. So let's cancel out MBs manually so that my computer algebra system doesn't freak out and think it's, a, a, I don't know, something that they can build. Um, oh, wow, well, still not handling it right. Um, oh, wait, 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 equation three. That's probably not. Okay, um, wait, still no. How much time do I have? Three, uh, two and a half minutes. Um, wonder if uh, it's a uh, capital N is something. Uh, so let me just put this in to see what it'll do. Okay, they look right. Oh, I had a mistake in the equation here, there. That's why. Um, so everything else was probably fine. I just uh, had this mistake that I didn't realize earlier that I had. Okay. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> so, um, let me put in as my solution the second of that element there. So the first um, substitute in n is equal to 4. So my answer is this. Let me just copy and paste that in. And my um, that is my second answer. Will be um, post collision velocities and uh, pre collision uh, velocities are same as good. And then finally, the last one so, you know, assuming MA is heavier than MB, uh, can the ball MB reach a higher height than MA's initial height? Uh, all right, I'm going to run out of time to do this. Um, uh, so I'll just say running out of time uh, will try to answer in attached work. 
So um, that needs a little bit of a consideration, sorry. If I didn't waste like three, four minutes troubleshooting this missing VNAT, um, then I probably would have had time to finish it. But let me just do it outside of the time limit. So with uh, C, um, what you are going to need is uh, this kind of consideration here. So you've had this collision here. And you are basically adding one more part to it. So you still have this uh, snapshot, of, um, the process of swing down to the before snapshot, collision after snapshot. And I, I think here you have to keep all those snapshots because really what those snapshots are doing is allowing you to work through this non-conservation of momentum. So you start to keep all these snapshots and you are simply adding one additional snapshot of this uh, ball MB swinging up to some height and uh, reaching some height. Let me call that uh, H sub B. So there's this final snapshot of, uh, of uh, final snapshot. <laughs> So as you try to work out the expression for the um, expression for the maximum height that MB can reach, I think we can use all the work that we have done so far for A and B. Uh, here, let me say, let me just write it. Uh, used computer algebra system. So. As uh, we are working through this uh, final process of swing up, where energy is conserved and momentum is not conserved, similar to MA swinging down, what you can say is, okay, we're going to start out assuming we know these two speeds. VA, I guess I don't really care. I don't, I'm looking at how high up the MB goes. So I can just look at VB. So looking at that, I can say, okay, the total energy is conserved. So I will say my total energy in the after snapshot is equal to my total energy in the final snapshot. Um, and I guess what's important to remember is I'm restricting it, restricted to B, because I don't really care about A anymore. So I'm kind of changing my system going from this snapshot to that snapshot. So I have kinetic energy of mass B, one half mb vb squared and no potential energy it's at where i define that to be zero and in the final position my potential energy is zero sorry my kinetic <laughs> my kinetic energy is zero and all the energy i have is potential energy that's mb times g times hb so i can solve for hb here hb is equal to Masses cancel out. Uh, it's going to be VB squared over 2G. So, um, yeah, so what is the maximum height MB may reach, assuming that MA is much greater than MB? All right, I think I can do the rest of it in the computer algebra system. So, the equations 1 and 2 that I defined before, they still hold. So I think I'm going to keep my equations um, one and two. Yeah. And I just need to add equation three, which is going to be what I just uh, wrote down here. Um, yeah, let me just uh, say H, oh, I need to define the symbol um, HB. And equation three is HB is equal to VB squared divided by 2 times g. Oh, wait, I, oh, I need to define symbol g, I think. OK. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's a little bit picky about the capitalization. So let's uh, look at my equations, make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Good. Um, 
and only higher than initial high. You know what? Let me uh, introduce one more equation. So I'm going to introduce a, um, the, the, um, the swing down thing uh, where we worked out this expression. So we worked out this. Uh, so let me call this equation for v naught is equal to square root of 2 times g times h. So I have equation 4, equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. This kind of, these are the equations that describe the whole process, uh, the conservation laws for the parts where they apply. So let's say we are solving this. And uh, uh, even though we kind of know it, v naught is one of the unknowns we are solving for in this system of equation. We have Va, we have Vb, and actually the one that we care about the most is Hb. Um, and I'm hoping the way I put everything here, it'll solve Hb in terms of Vb, in terms of other known quantities, which will ultimately be H. Let's hope that's what it'll do. So solving that. Good. Um, well, it's got a, a couple of different solutions. So let's look at, put this uh, into solutions variable. And uh, so the first element is first the set of solutions, um, which looks like something. Uh, second set of solutions is, oh yeah, again, this is where the collision is. So let's not look at that at all. Uh, let's just look at the first set only. So for this expression, um, so a function of h and n. So we can just give it a little bit of a try. So we are just looking at h, b. I can substitute in, um, I don't know, n is equal to 4. That's what we are working with before. Then it goes up to 2.56h. OK. Interesting. Um, so if n is equal to 1, yeah, it goes up to the same height. That makes sense. What if n is equal to 10? Oh, OK, it can go higher, 100. And um, it, it actually approaches a value asymptotically. It approaches 4 asymptotically here. And if you look at the analytical expression and take the limit where n goes to infinity, you can actually figure that out. You know, n squared, the highest order term here is n squared. So use L'Hopital's rule or whatever. In the limit n goes to infinity, what remains is 4. So you can say, um, uh, so answer for C, uh, max height that all B may reach is uh, HB is equal to 4H. So, uh, the whole the full work below. So, so yeah, that, that's uh, the uh, answer for C that I didn't have quite you know, time to get to. So, all right, let me uh, paste in all the work here. Uh, I have my part A. Uh, no, let me just do it the proper way. This is the list of A. And then I have B. Oh, and uh, when you use computer algebra system, what I would ask you to do is, um, you know, attach some documentation. So you could either copy and paste the text uh, of the computer algebra system, the commands you are using and whatnot. Um, or you can do what I'm going to do now. You can uh, take a, the screenshot of it. So I think, yeah, it's beginning from here where it's relevant. So. I have um, is yeah. 
so that uh, you know it's a matter of a kind of citing your sources or showing your work. Uh, using computer algebra system again is completely allowed, perfectly fine. Uh, what I would ask you is uh, show me your work using the computer algebra system. So that's uh, um, algebra for B and uh, for C. There's this new kind of conceptual thing. And, um, I use the computer algebra for the rest of it. So let me just uh, say, yeah, I think I can just go from here. So these are all my equations. Yeah, the point of the work is that someone else should be able to reproduce what you've done. Um, I should, I mean, I probably won't do most of the time, but sometimes I'm curious, sometimes I see something that maybe doesn't make sense to me, then I want to be able to try it out um, and uh, see um, where the mistake might be or where my own misunderstanding was. So let me go save work and continue. And yep, so that's it. Sorry, this one took a little bit longer. Wait, not this one. Uh, this one took a little bit longer than um, it should have because uh, I wasted time. <laughs> but uh, if you aren't wasting time with explanations, I do believe it's doable within 20 minutes. I just uh, had a mistake here that I fixed, uh, took some time, and then 